this is the agenda for um, today's uh, demo so we'll be uh, discussing about what is terra data and then uh, we will discuss about the course contents like what are the topics we are going to cover throughout the course and then uh, i will discuss about uh, terra data advantages so like what are the advantages terra data has uh, over other rdbms product which are in the market and then we will discuss about um, high level terra data architecture and the components of terra data and then how the components interact with each other and then we will briefly discuss about how data is stored and retrieved from uh, terra data tables okay so this is the high level agenda for today's demo so uh, first of all uh, to start with uh, what is terra data right okay so terra data is nothing but it's a, it's a relational database management system when we say relational database management system uh, normally these are all the softwares um, that helps us to interact with the databases right like when we say databases so it's nothing but a collection of tables right like for example um, when we say tables so in tables we store the data in a row and a column format it's a two, two dimensional format right so so uh, database is nothing but a collection of um, related tables like if you have worked in a, any customer environment so we will have a sales database or customer database okay so when you take sales database um, it will contain maybe hundreds or thousands of table which are related to sales okay so uh, that's about database uh, when we say database management system it's nothing but any software that helps us to interact with the databases like for example uh, we have oracle db2 mysql and teradata right these are all um, dbms softwares which help us to interact with databases okay so there are so many uh, database management system softwares in the product so okay, um, like we have oracle db2 mysql ms access we have uh, teradata netism so all the because the list is huge right so each one of the dbms has i mean even though they have uh, common functionality and they are very popular in, in their specific area okay so uh, teradata is also one of the uh, dbm software and one of the main advantages teradata is mainly used for data warehousing okay for example if you take teradata uh, net or netism these kind of uh, software they are mainly used for data warehouse because they are capable of storing huge volume of data and at the same time uh, they they support large number of concurrent users because uh, for example if you see the list right these are all the some of the customers who use teradata for their data warehouse like you, you can see the all the big names uh, uh, here like uh, uh, british airways cisco coca cola lloyds banking vodafone wells fargo okay these are all the major names because they have a huge customer base and they deal with a large number of transaction and they store huge volume of data in their data warehouse data warehouse at the same time there will be hundreds of business users who access the data from data warehouse for improving the revenue of the company okay so that's why their data and net is they are capable of storing large volume of data and at the same time they support large number of concurrent queries okay so that's why those da database softwares are popular for data warehousing okay and another advantage of terra data is um, it's mainly based on parallel processing architecture okay so we will discuss about that in detail so parallel processing architecture it's nothing but whenever you want to perform any task right the task will be divided into smaller task and each smaller task will be run in parallel okay we will see some examples for that one okay so the popular products in the like uh, teradata netisub they are based on uh, this parallel processing architecture okay so that's the main advantage of teradata and we will see one example one example okay when we see the example you will understand um, how parallel processing architecture helps us to improve the performance of queries okay since we mentioned that um, teradata is mainly used for um, uh, large data warehouses it doesn't mean that uh, it's not suitable for uh, smaller data warehouses it's not like that you can start with a few gigabytes of data in your data warehouse and then you can go up to uh, even terabytes or petabytes of data okay so teradata is suitable for all the environments okay 
and uh, this is developed by a company called Teradata Corporation. Okay. So, do you guys have any questions on the uh, about uh, Teradata introduction? Of oh, good. Okay. And another thing is. Um, Whatever new uh, concepts or new technologies are coming in the market, right? Teradata has the ability to adapt to them. For example, nowadays big data is very popular, right? So when you say big data, it's nothing but the ability to handle large volume of data, uh, whether the data is structured or semi-structured or unstructured, right? So what Teradata is doing is like a, to handle big data. Now the Hadoop platform is popular, right? So with Teradata, they it provides connectivity connectors to connect to Hadoop like for example uh, for example your data is stored in a uh, big data environment or a Hadoop environment right so you don't have to write any um, uh, Hadoop programs to access the data okay from Teradata if you know that uh, where the, where the data is stored in Hadoop right you can run SQL queries to fetch the data from Hadoop okay what will happen is uh, Teradata they are providing uh, the connectors right whenever you run any SQL queries to fetch the data from Hadoop Teradata will convert to your SQL queries into Hadoop programs that is MapReduce program to fetch the data from Hadoop that is your big data platform. Similarly, when you run some insert queries to insert data into Hadoop, it will automatically convert the SQL queries into Hadoop programs to insert the data. Okay. So what I'm saying is any new trend is coming in the market, Teradata has the ability to adapt to it. That's why uh, it's a leading data product in the market. Similarly, nowadays, um, in memory DBMS is popular like uh, traditionally when you take any DBMS product right, the data is stored in a secondary storage okay but uh, in, in in memory DBMS product they store the data in main memory itself that's why whenever you run any query even though you deal with huge volume of data your query will run faster because your entire data is stored in main memory itself that is in RAM okay because for example SAP HANA they use this approach okay so now in latest Teradata version, they have introduced this concept also. For example, if you want to, uh, if you have a set of data which you use frequently, right, those data you can store in your main memory itself, okay. So Teradata, they have introduced that feature in their latest version, okay. Similarly, they have introduced columnar approach, okay. So whatever any new trend is coming in the market, it is included in the latest version of Teradata. So that's briefly about Teradata, okay. So as I mentioned, uh, Teradata is nothing but a, a relational database management system software. It has the ability to store huge volume of data and it can support large number of concurrent users. And it's used by most of the Fortune 500 companies. And the base for Teradata is because it's using massively parallel processing architecture at that. It has the ability to uh, it, to adapt to market standards. For example, now Teradata has provided a concept called unified data architecture, where it can process any structured, semi-structured, or unstructured data. Okay. So we'll quickly cover uh, the course content. What are the topics we are going to cover? Okay. So I have divided the course into ten different modules. Okay. In module one. We will discuss about uh, Teradata introduction and the uh, advantages Teradata has compared to other RDBMS product. And then at the high level, we'll, we will discuss about what is the difference between um, RDBMS and data warehouse. And then we will discuss about various utilities provided by Teradata, like what are the utilities available to load or export data from Teradata tables. And then we will have a uh, demo on how to install Teradata in your personal system. Okay, So we will download Teradata software from Teradata website and then I will go through the installation steps to configure the Teradata in your system. Okay, And then in module 2, we will discuss about Teradata architecture. Here we will discuss about what are the components involved in, a, in Teradata architecture and how data is stored and retrieved from Teradata tables and then how Teradata is utilizing the parallel architecture to improve the performance of queries. Okay, those six will be covered in module two. 
and then in module 3 we will discuss about basic uh, sql commands so most of the commands whatever we are going to cover here that is uh, common in other rdbms products also like uh, how do we create tables and how do we manipulate the data in tables like we will discuss about insert update and delete queries and then we will discuss about various um, set operators like union union or intersect and everything and then we'll discuss about uh, logical and conditional operators and then how do we manipulate da data stored in string array data types and then we will discuss about various date and time manipulation commands and then we'll discuss about uh, inner join outer joins uh, built in functions and aggregates okay so these are all uh, common across all the rdbms products so here we'll go through these commands and with uh, clear real time examples so next in module 4 we'll discuss about uh, the important concept of teradata that is uh, indexes so indexes are very important in teradata because uh, based on your prime your index only teradata will decide how to store the data and how to retrieve the data if you don't understand the indexing concept properly and if you don't use uh, indexes in your tables then your query will take a lot of time and you you won't be utilizing the system resources properly okay so that's why the indexing concept is critical in teradata okay so we'll discuss about various indexes in teradata like what is primary index uh, what is secondary index and partition primary index so we'll discuss about what is partition primary index and then we will discuss about uh, scenarios when we can create secondary index and when we can go for partition primary index okay anyway primary index is um, it's a must for any tables whenever you create any table you should define primary index okay but other two indexes are optional but we will discuss about scenarios where where we need these indexes and what are the advantages you will get when you use these indexes and then in module 5 we will discuss about various teradata objects like how do we deal with the tables how do we create views macros and store procedures okay and then we will discuss about various space concepts in teradata okay how space is allocated and how do we handle the space errors okay those kind of things we will discuss and then in module 6 we will discuss about some advanced sql of commands like uh, how do we deal with the subqueries and the uh, various overlap functions and uh, how do we use compression to reduce the size of the table and then we will discuss about um, how teradata collects statistics about your table to come up with a, a better ex execution plan and uh, how we can use these options to improve the performance of your queries okay and then we will discuss about uh, various dbc tables dbc tables are mainly system tables uh, most of the time they are used by uh, dbs but uh, there are few tables which will be useful for developers and uh, designers okay so we will discuss about common dbc tables that you can use in your in your project in your environment in module 7 we will discuss about various teradata utilities uh, like fast load multi load PTEC, fast export and tpt these are all the utilities we use uh, to load our ex export data if you are working in a teradata to project right at any point of time you will be using any of these tools okay because for example if you want to load data into a staging table you will go for a fast load table and then if you want to do any data manipulation or if you want to load data into any existing table you will use multi load similarly if you want to use any sql command or you want to create any database objects right you will use ptech similarly to export data you will use fast export so in module 7 we will discuss about these utilities and then we will see some examples how do we use these utilities and then we will discuss about real time scenarios in which scenario we can you go for these utilities itself okay so there are some scenarios where you need to use fast load and in some scenarios you will go for multi load so we'll discuss about those because both are used to load the data table data into tables in which scenario we'll use fast load and and in which scenario we'll go for multi load okay and similarly we'll discuss about fast export as well and the last one tpt that's a recent addition to uh, teradata whatever functionalities you can achieve through fast load multi load btec and fast export everything can be done through tpt because now going forward any new features will be added to tpt 
so we will discuss about that utility as well but if you take any project environment uh, the existing scripts right fast or or multi load they have been in use for many years more than 10 years okay but uh, so most of the customer environments still they use fast load and the multi load but uh, going forward they will try to replace these utilities with tpt okay so that's why i will cover all the utilities because uh, still customers uh, some of the customers they prefer to use uh, the existing utilities and then in module 8 we will discuss about various data protection mechanisms like uh, how teradata recovers from any hardware or soft software failures okay for example uh, the disk associated with the tbm software may fail and how teradata will recover from any disk failures okay similarly if the transaction fails or if any of the node fails how what will happen and then how teradata will recover from those failures okay so we will discuss about those concepts in module 8 and then in module 9 we will discuss about various performance tuning tips okay so in this we will just try to understand like how teradata executes any query and how can we understand the ex- execution plan prepared by teradata and then how we can improve the performance okay so uh, we will discuss about some real time examples and then we will discuss about various uh, techniques that you can use in your projects okay and then module 10 it's an optional one so here we can discuss about real time scenarios like what kind of uh, task normally we do in teradata based projects okay so those kind of things we will discuss here and then we will discuss about interview questions like if you are preparing for any teradata interview right what are the common questions that you can expect okay those things we will discuss in module 10 okay so this is about the course contents Uh, do you guys have any questions on the course contents uh, or if you are looking for any specific topic or you have any questions no questions no i think it's good okay thank you 